Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mara J. Pinky and Son. I am back again for another video. This time, we are tasked to present a virtual critical discourse analysis on the homily of Archbishop Socrates Buenaventura Villegas at former President Benigno de Aquino III's funeral mass. Manila, Philippines, one of the country's most outspoken Catholic prelates, Socrates Benaventura Villegas, the current Archbishop of Lingayen Dakupan, Pangasinan, and the former President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines. At the Church of Jesus in Ateneo de Manila University, Quezon City, on Saturday, June 26, stated that, the best eulogy tribute we can pay our dear President Ninoy Aquino is to bring back recover, preserve, safeguard, and never to compromise again our dignity as a people and the decency of our leaders as servants, not bosses. The genre of the source belongs to the prepared text of the aforementioned Archbishop's homily. The context of the video I watched on YouTube was delivered by Archbishop Villegas on Saturday, June 26, at the Church of Jisu in Ateneo de Manila University, Quezon City. The language utilized by the Archbishop is eloquent combinations of English and Tagalog words. The video lasted 11 minutes and 36 seconds, published by Rappler, the Philippines' leading digital media company, with the courtesy of Radio Katipunan. Villegas stated in his homily during Aquino's funeral mass that he hoped the death of the country's democracy icon son would ignite another fire within us to resurrect his example of decency and integrity. Along with that, Villegas strongly implies that Benigno was the only son of the country's democracy icons. His father, Benigno Aquino Jr., who was assassinated in 1983 in a bid to restore democracy during Ferdinand Marcos' dictatorial rule, and his mother, Corazon Aquino, who succeeded Marcos in 1986 and re-established democratic institutions in the country as the country's first female president. From that, we can observe that in the Philippines, the Aquino surname has traditionally been linked and synonymous with politics. Villegas continued, Eulogies have been written, spoken, and shared, but the best eulogy, tribute we can pay to our dear president, Ninoy Aquino, is to restore, recover, preserve, safeguard, and never again compromise our dignity as people and decency of our leaders as servants, not bosses. Villegas highlights the phrase never again to compromise our dignity as a nation and the decency of our leaders as servants, not bosses, which could be a criticism to the current cabinet members. It's plausible to think that he meant that the best eulogy for Pinoy is to um, bring back decency. So as a result, he regards or he considers today's government or government decency as absurdity and balderdash. In his homily, he said emphatically that the flags at half mass are not only for the dead president, but for the dying decent governance. Everyone can extrapolate from Villegas' statement that he is criticizing the current system of governance. He does not regard today's government to be um entirely decent. It also gives us a glimpse of certain political nuances or political color. His remarks were not two subtle swipes at President Rodrigo Duterte, who often attacked the Catholic Church and the clergy for criticizing his profanity-laced friends, authoritarian tendencies, and his bloody war on drugs, which had killed thousands of alleged drug offenders. Duterte once called God stupid, afterwards apologizing and saying, Sorry, God. Silence of Dignity According to his sisters, Aquino had been in and out of the hospital before the pandemic and was undergoing dialysis before he died. His silence after his presidential term was a silence of dignity, Villegas stated. Noinoy Aquino brought dignity and honesty to the nation as our president and he maintained that dignity after his retirement, the prelates said. Noble statesman silence is now rare and forgotten. It was the silence of the Angmatuid, it was the silence of nobility, of dignity, which we definitely miss now. Deducing therefrom, the prelate 
contended that Aquino chose to endure his own problems by himself and kept the true state of his health from people as he did not want uh, to trouble anyone. His way of asserting, asserting this um, words is like affirming, praising Noi Noi for his silence of dignity. From those aforementioned words, everyone can infer that the prelate wants the noble statesman who is rare and forgotten to be back now. Villegas thanked God with teary-eyed eyes for giving the Philippines an honest public servant who died as he lived, staying true to his campaign slogan, Tuwid na daan. 61 is an age too young to die, but his relatively short life is fitting reminder for us that what matters in there is not how long we live, but how we live, Archbishop finally said. From his manner of speech, tone, and facial expression when asserting, we can infer how solid his foothold and genuine support for Noinoy is. He is clearly proud of Ninoy Aquino's accomplishments and attainments during his term. Last Respects To recapitulate, Aquino, who died early Thursday morning, June 24, 2021, had been waiting for a kidney transplant while quietly battling diabetes-related renal illness, according to his family. Thousands of mourners, friends, former members of his cabinet, Past and existing officials pay their last respects at the Church of the Jesu at the Ateneo de Manila, where he cremated his remains were brought the next day, sealed in a shiny metal urn. Villegas, a former president of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, officiated over the burial mass, which was attended by several priests and Caloacan Bishop Pablo Virgilio Ambo David. All of the mourners stood and applauded for the, about three minutes after the church ceremony ended. Vice President Lenny Robredo, Senator Franklin Drilon, San Miguel Corporation President and CEO Ramon Ang, and basketball player James Yap were among those present. Duterte did not attend at Aquino's funeral mass or any of the other memorial ceremonies, but he did declare a 10-day national mourning period in his honor. He stated in a statement released on Thursday that his predecessor's death was a chance to join in prayer and set aside our differences. His memory and his family's history of offering their life for the cause of democracy will forever stay inscribed on our hearts, said President Rodrigo Duterte. We can reflect from President Duterte's words and actions that despite not being able to attend any of the bereaved former president's memorial ceremonies, he nevertheless extended his sincere condolences to the bereaved, notwithstanding their families' differences. We can deduce that sending condolences entails approaching someone who has recently experienced a loss and expressing words of comfort or condolences. It's a manner of acknowledging their grief and demonstrating your sympathy for them, despite their families' conflict and disputes. That's the end of my virtual critical discourse analysis. I hope you find it interesting. Have a great day ahead. Once again, this is Mara J. Pinky and Son.